The making of Love and Monsters, the best of behind the scenes, cast and crew. Love and Monsters is a 2020 American monster adventure film directed by Michael Matthews. The film stars Dylan O'Brien, Jessica Henwick, Dan Ewing, Michael Rooker and Ariana Greenblatt. Development began in 2012, however the project didn't get put into motion until October 2018, when O'Brien and then Matthews joined the film. The rest of the cast joined over the next few months, and filming took place in Australia from March to May 2019. The film was well received by critics and at the 93rd Academy Awards, the film was nominated for Best Visual Effects. The popularity of the film has given audiences an appetite for more, which is why we'll be sharing with you some of the best behind-the-scenes content. This video will contain some spoilers, so if you haven't seen the film yet, we suggest coming back to this video when you have. The Set Even though the film is set in California, it's filmed entirely on location in Australia. Supervising location manager Duncan Jones said that having the perfect set was integral to creating the movie. We needed everything to look big, amazing and wild. That's what the script's all about, he said. Jessica Henwick, who played central character Amy, agrees with Jones saying we couldn't have shot this film in California even though that's where it's set. It wouldn't have looked right. In Australia, there are still pockets which are just so wild. Stephen Boyle, head of Creature Effects, also concurred, Australia has been perfect for this because it looks futuristic. It looks modern. It can look like another planet. It can look like anything can live here, which is ideal for a movie about futuristic monsters. Creating the Monsters Production designer Dan Hennon said the most important stage is reading the script, then sharing ideas with the director about how to create the monsters true to how the script describes them. Some behind-the-scenes footage shows us Hennon and his team adding slime to a pile of giant frog's eyes which will form part of the appearance of the frog monster in the movie. The one non-human character fans of the film loved is Mavis the robot. Boyle said of her, she was one of the rare cases where you forget that she's made out of fiberglass, that there's an actress reading her lines and a puppeteer. She's just Mavis. The Bunker a lot of thought went into the post-apocalyptic bunker where the survivors reside, including lead Joel Dawson. A lot of importance was placed on the detail, as each character was given a hobby and something to keep them occupied in such a confined, deserted place. The set designers also added objects recognizable to the audience in our world, like condiments on the table, to bring a kind of homeliness and familiarity to the bunker. Director Michael Matthews gave a behind-the-scenes tour of the bunker taking us through the homemade ale called the Devil's Drink, the homegrown mushrooms, and all the handmade weaponry and their main protein source, monster meat. Dan Hennon and his team were confronted with the challenge of making Amy's bunker appear different. They responded to the challenge by making it excavated from a cave with a beach. According to the director, they had to get in 600 tons of sand to build the set. The Characters Speaking of his character Joel, Dylan O'Brien said it was the role he was always meant to play, because he loved how incapable he was, and the film is essentially a very unique coming-of-age arc. In his own words, O'Brien described Joel as such a scaredy cat, but with a big heart and desire to be braver and protect the ones he loves. His character is a natural artist, and although he's not very good at first, drawing an unflattering portrait of his girlfriend at the beginning of the film, he grows to find solace in creating art. Seven years after the start of the apocalypse, Joel manages to contact Amy. Deciding he has nothing to lose, he set off to try and find her. On his way, he finds the companionship of a dog called Boy, and they become partners on their journey. Zelly Bullen, the onset dog trainer, said that Hero, who plays the lead dog, has an incredibly intense relationship with the lead actor Dylan. And she says, in all of the years doing what we do, it is probably the strongest real-life off-camera bond we've had with one of our animals and one of the actors. As if people weren't falling for Dylan O'Brien enough. Clyde Dutton and Minnow rescue Joel from a nest of worm monsters called Sand Gobblers. They teach Joel some basic survival skills and that not all monsters are hostile, demonstrating how you can always tell in their eyes. Young actress Ariana Greenblatt, who plays Minnow, said of her role, 
You can be little, but you can also do crazy things like working with monsters. Jessica Henwick, who plays Amy, said that what really drew her to the project was the opportunity to play a character over such a large period of time. We meet her as a wide-eyed 17-year-old, and then when we come back to her, seven years have passed, and the apocalypse happened, so she's a very different person. Seeing Joel again is quite a shock for the character Amy, as they've both become completely different people. She's been living with 20 geriatric people, and taking care of them in what is known as the Old Colony. She's been thrust into this carer role where she has to help her fellow survivors. When Cap, the film's resident baddie, arrives, Amy feels drawn to him as much as she does to her former boyfriend. What did you make of Love and Monsters? So much went into creating this monstrous futuristic world, and we certainly think it paid off. We release videos on the hottest new film releases regularly, so make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss out.